Over the years, I've received countless requests to cover one game in particular, the masterpiece that is Zelda 2. The problem is that I'd never played it for myself, so I didn't feel like I could truly do it justice. But you know what, if it's really that important to Razor Burton, I figured the least I could do was give it a try today. So at long last, here is why you need to play Zelda 2. Even from the very start of the game, I was blown away by the rich storytelling and interactive conversations you can have with the villagers. But the gameplay is where Zelda 2 really shines. The fact that you can swing your sword while standing or ducking leads to some really innovative combat scenarios. I also love that they use the song from Smash Bros, that's an awesome nod to other Nintendo franchises. As you journey around the overworld... <laughs> I can't. Oh man, I tried, but I just can't. Zelda 2 is so bad. It's absolutely awful. But man, I had you, didn't I? Alright, look, I'll level with you. I definitely can't cover this game in good conscience, but there are some elements that could be cool if it was expanded and modernized a little bit. And that's why you need to play Infernax. For those that are unaware, Infernax is basically what would happen if the good parts of Zelda 2 and Castlevania 2 had a baby. There's still towns full of people to talk to, but instead of cryptic BS, they're actually useful, and can sell you potions or spells and begin quest lines. There's a day-night cycle too as you're roaming around the world, but it's not crap, so that's good. One of the aspects I actually did enjoy about Zelda 2 was the XP and upgrade system, and that more or less carries over exactly the same here. Which makes fighting bad guys worthwhile, but you also don't have to grind either, which is nice. You're still on a quest to find five temples and defeat bosses to gather orbs and stop a satanic ritual to summon the devil. But instead of a tedious and confusing overworld, they ditch that in favor of a more traditional Metroidvania style map and abilities gained to access new areas. But at the end of the day, you're still smacking stuff with a mace and jumping around pixely obstacles rocking to a chiptune soundtrack. Which is a great day if you ask me. And it certainly doesn't hide its inspirations by any means. One time I found a wall that looked like the infamous corner in Simon's Quest, and sure enough when I knelt down for a bit, a tornado came and instantly killed me. There's a lot of humor in Infernax, and while the weapon upgrades and challenging boss fights are typically my bread and butter, the interactions with NPCs ended up being the highlight for me, because Infernax also has a robust morality system that leads to multiple endings, which was certainly an unexpected surprise. Sometimes when you come across a wanderer, you'll be met with a decision, and depending on how you respond, this will increase your good or bad rating, which can allow you to join certain factions and even open up new missions and endgame goals. I'm typically a player who will choose the good path on a playthrough, but for some reason I decided to change it up and go bad from the get-go, and I gotta say, they make a compelling case for why this is worth it. The spells and quests you unlock here are super fun. You can still beat the game whichever way you decide, but the bosses and areas you explore may be totally different than someone who made opposite choices, which is why it was extremely rewarding to play again and see what I'd been missing on the good path. And even cooler, there's cheat codes you discover by beating the game under certain objectives, which unlock different starting builds. Or, of course, you could just use the Konami code on the title screen to play as a front-flipping army dude with a gun, which makes a replay much faster and easier when you're trying to uncover those secret endings. But don't worry, there's also ones like the Mage if you want to up the challenge quite a bit. Basically, it's infinitely replayable is what I'm trying to say. The game feel of just mowing down baddies left and right is through the roof with this one. It truly goes to show that tweaking a few frustrating elements from back in the day can quickly turn coal into a diamond, and the team behind Infernax took a lot of care to ensure it elevated the originals without bashing them or changing them entirely. If you have an appreciation for the games of old but don't want to be bogged down by archaic design choices, then you absolutely need to check out Infernax. And uh, go tell Rasputin to play it too. Hey, I hope you enjoyed my string of new videos lately. I've been unofficially calling it the Summer of Snowman because as some of you know, I work in a school now and will have way less time once the new year starts up here in just a few weeks. That's certainly not to say this channel will be done forever, I will always have the creative itch and want to come back, I just know I won't be able to make any promises for a while. 
So if you want to keep up with me in the meantime, or hear my opinions on what I've been playing lately, Twitter is the best place to do so. That's basically the only social media I'm on these days. I even started making a game a little while back, so who knows, maybe there will be even more snowman surprises in the future. But until then, thanks for watching, and stay frosty my friends.